welcome to First Impressions, Nick. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. So it's fab because I actually, we've not met before. We've not met, have we, face to face? No. No, but I know your lovely new wife, Lucinda. Um, and obviously we follow each other on Instagram. Mm. Uh, so I know some of the things that you get up to. But uh, yeah, it's fab to finally have you on today. Okay, so I thought we would start by if you were in a lift and you were, you know, going from the bottom floor to the top floor, uh, how would you introduce yourself to people? So for yeah, for people on the podcast that, that won't know, it's quite obvious that I've got half a right arm, so I lost it just yeah. above the elbow. So people would have already seen that. And then probably the most interesting fact for me to fire straight off is that I play disability rugby league. So it's a variant that's adapted for people with various different different disabilities to play. I uh, captain the Castle for Tigers and have done for five years. Something I'm really proud of leading those lads out. It's amazing. Um, and I'm also part of the England PGRL squad, which had our first World Cup in 2022. Um, I'm trying to get my years right. And uh, we won. So we played Australia, New Zealand, Wales, and so our current world champions, which, you know, still feels sort of bizarre to say, and I haven't really wrapped my head around, but we we did, we went, we won. So, yeah, we are. Um, so, yeah, that's something I'm really proud of. And then out, outside of rugby, I work in the disability sector for a company that focus on trying to uh, make work exp- work better for people with disabilities and the experience of being in work better and improve the conditions so yeah I'm really proud of that as well yeah obviously the disability is something that we both connected on in terms of you know instagram and seeing what we're up to um you did mention about you know your arm and i'm guessing that like i mean correct me if i'm wrong but i guess you'll have a lot of different first impressions is that correct and like what do you usually get and so absolutely, it's it really different depending on what setting I'm in. So yeah. because it's I lost my right arm, handshakes can always be really odd. Yeah. Um, and sometimes for my own amusement, I can make it a bit more awkward and jiggle my hand about to just make <laughs> yeah. myself smile a bit. Um, one of the main things is people not knowing what to say, especially if they didn't realise I had half an arm. So if I've got a big jacket on when I take it off, mid-conversation they can start spluttering uh, 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 and they don't know where to look. And it's, yeah. Sometimes I've had to say, it's all right. Take a breath. Nothing's changed. It's okay. And they're like, uh, uh, uh. It's, like it's okay. I, yeah. I know it's not there. It's not a problem. Um, yeah. And the other, the other big one is like walking down the street. I don't really ever get people staring because people are too polite and they realize when they when they notice that they look at it, it takes a second for them to compute, realize they're staring at a stump of an arm, and then they whip their heads away and look in like the opposite direction. And it's the whip of the head because it's normally a really sharp, like, oh, 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 no, got to be looking at any, like, pigeon or rooftop in another direction. And it's it's the head whip that I really notice. And it, it happens, you know, walking down any any high street, like, dozens of times because your eyes, like, subconsciously, your eyes drawn to something that isn't, you know, standard or that you're used to seeing. So people re- but they realize, like, oh, no, no, shouldn't be staring, shouldn't be staring. So, yeah, yeah. that's that. I get that a lot. I get that a lot as well. And I think it's sad, really, because, like, I'm a small person. And if I see a really tall person, I'm like, whoa. Like, I don't stare for long, but I just think Mm -hmm. it's so natural to to look at each other and, you know, like, almost acknowledging it is okay. Would you say that's that's Yeah, absolutely. It's one of the things I feel sort of quite passionate about is normalising disability because... It's not that all disabled people are either, you know, Paralympic champions or people that are, you know, terribly depressed, can't manage, just, you know, can't leave the house. And there are people at both ends of those spectrums. Like, it's not to say that that doesn't exist, but there's a lot in between of people just living a normal life, cutting about, and you don't see that. So people don't know how to handle disability, especially visible ones in my case, just don't know how to handle it. So either just just trying to normalise it, like, when I see someone with an amputation, like I absolutely stare, and it's sometimes oh wait wait yeah probably don't don't make it weird, um, but it <laughs> yeah. is it's it's a natural thing. Your eyes drawn to difference, 
Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't need to be awkward. Like, yeah, if you stand there just, you know, like eyeballing someone for a while, yeah, not all right. But just, oh, all right, yeah, fine. It doesn't need to be this whole awkward thing that, yeah. that people don't know how to deal with is my like one of my my things. Yeah. And and obviously I'm not gonna go through hashtag trauma or anything like that. But have you noticed like a difference between um both experiences and like have you had people being like, Oh, I couldn't do that if I were you? You know, that yeah. whole Absolutely. You know, experience. Um, yeah. So I get it quite a bit in the gym. So I've got a big carbon fiber uh like black and metal arm that it looks like a big robot arm but it's it's not got any robotics in it it's just like carbon fiber and steel and people come over oh that's amazing you're doing so well I was like, oh, i'm just doing my leg press machine nothing yeah. to do with it and it's it's one of the, like you know the because i try and put my content out there so people can see like what what can be done and what prosthetics you can get like on the nhs and stuff like that because it's really hard to get them but then there's the other side of that coin with, you know, like sort of inspiration point and people be like, mm. oh, it's so amazing. Like, people like people could be quite surprised that I'm married and I've got a partner. And like, yeah. I mean, I know I'm ginger, but I'm not that bad looking a lad. Like, <laughs> and it's just like, it's, it, 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 I just find it so bizarre. But before I asked him, I had so little experience of disability. It was untrue. And it's only because I've got involved with, well, it took me quite a, t- a long time to get used to it, but get involved with disability charities, now I work in the sector, disability sport. Um, but yeah, people people can just be so, so odd and awkward with it. Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I think, like, I don't know if you agree, but for me, like, there's days where if I'm in a good mood, it's fine. Like, anything that people say, I can laugh it off. I can make a joke. I can even joke with them and be like, oh, as if you just said that. Yeah. But if I'm not in a good mood, I'm just like, not today. Like, I'll never be rude, but yeah. sometimes I do get tired of it. Yeah, so the ones that, that get to me more, so there's a couple of things I do. I tend to, I tend to be, even if I'm having a bad day, be super polite if someone's offered me help, whether it's yeah. carrying something or whatever, because although I don't tend to need it, it's quite unusual yeah. that I've, I've learned how to do everything that I do now, especially because my stump is quite long. Yeah. It's quite capable of holding stuff. Yeah. But I don't want that person, you know, if I, I gave them an earful, I don't want them to not then help someone that might need it later yeah. on. I think I'd like to live in a society where people can offer help and it can be refused or taken and no one takes offence and it's all all quite like a nice thing. One of the ones that gets to me is in a really bizarre um, like I don't know the coincidence or pattern, but quite a lot of times it's either in a petrol station, and then or at traffic lights, and people will just turn up. Like, How'd you lose that? I'm like, oh my god, absolutely not. Like you, no, no, no like yeah. And I get, I get people are curious about it. I'm curious when I see another amputee, amputee, whether it's congenital, whether it's like traumatic, and but. Get to know the person first. Like if you if you wouldn't ask them like what they earn or you know like their sexual orientation or something yeah. like that. Like why are you asking me how I lost my arm? Like it, it, you've got no right to that information when we've literally stood next to each other at the traffic lights for like five seconds. Like what, yeah. what what's going through your head that gives you that entitlement? But like <clears throat> with kids and stuff though, when kids like say something embarrassing or like. like Mummy, where's his arm gone? I always try and be very like, you know, we're all just different. It's fine. Because when the parents like drag the kids away for saying something yeah. embarrassing, it just makes them scared of people that are different, whether it's disabilities or whatever. Whereas like the, the like top tier parenting that I see is that, that they just have that conversation. Well, you know, everyone's not the same. And they'll, they'll use an example of a friend or a, whatever. Like, So-and-so's got, you know, half a foot or, you know, walks with a limp. You know, everyone's, everyone's, not the same and that's fine isn't it they potter off like yes excellent that is because otherwise kids just get can get really scared of like you're instilling it in the subconscious if you pull them away like the whole disney disability is evil shorthand for evil type stuff is just cemented in the background isn't it and it's yeah yeah it's so well the disney thing is so boring now like 
it's just like we don't want to see villains as the different ones all the time like I don't know. I, I hope that in time goes away. I think I think slowly it is, but there's still like there was Anne Hathaway who did Witches, I think it yeah, was, and that with was the, a really the big thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like it's not needed, and it's I don't know. I just think as someone who's small as well, and then you know you get people laughing at little people. Like there's just so many ways that the media can. Be really powerful, really, can't they? Yeah, it's 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 lazy writing and stuff to just use difference as you know evil or the dodgy one or whatever. And the world's more nuanced than that. So do better. Yeah. It's twenty percent of the world's population, depending on what survey you want to go by, but have a disability. Like it should just be represented, and it shouldn't be like. My wife and I still point. I was like, oh, does does like. A bloke with half an arm on there, and they haven't made a whole thing of it. Like, you know, it isn't Captain Hawk, and yeah. he isn't like going on about it, just living his life. Like, oh, that's really nice. But yeah, it shouldn't be like it should just be <laughs> like part of cause. Which there are some, there are some productions and some like publication stuff that do it really well. It just needs more. And, like, I think it's it's like a well, hopefully a tipping point, isn't it? But like, mm-hmm. there's more. The more it gets done well, the more other people do it well and stuff like that. So hopefully it is. But I think it seems to be moving in the right direction, which is yeah, it's good. Yeah, me too. I think we're slowly getting there. It's just, like you say, I think it's more education and people mm-hmm. being open to learning as well. So, yeah, yeah we're getting there slowly. But in uh, on that vein of learning... Um, you've mentioned sport. Obviously, sport is a huge part of your life. Um, what? How would you say that sport sort of helped your journey with identity? Like, was it a huge part of? I hate the word acceptance, but was it you know part of that um, whole embracing? It, so it's really complicated one. It's a really good question, um, especially for me. Um, so when I lost my arm, I was a fitness instructor in the army reserves. Oh wow! And um, I carried on doing that for five years and it was actually a really good training tool because you'd have either, you know, people that weren't as physically strong or as tall, but oh, I can't do the eight foot wall, like climb over it on my, and I'd gone out and I took, cause I was like the lead instructor. I only wanted to carry on in that role. If I could do everything that I was going to be telling people to do, you know, like you can't stand in front of people instructing them on something. So I'd done that and I'd practiced it and I'd done it. And it was a really good training tool. I was like, well, it's not about, you know, you don't need to be a six foot five massive rugby player to be able to do this. Um, if I can do it with one arm, you can definitely do it with two. And it, it helped break down a lot of barriers because when I was first a fitness instructor, I was maybe a little bit, um, no, I just go, it's fine. Yeah, just crack on. <laughs> and as I matured, so that basically made me really confident in my disability for about five years until I lost the job. And then, then I crumbled. I had a really bad time because all of my confidence, you know, I was, I was in front of like, I don't know what it'd be, 100, 200 tro- troops, like instructing, doing stuff. And that had a lot of my self-worth in it. And then I fell out of sport, didn't really do anything. I used to play football, like to a pretty decent standard. And then I didn't play any sport apart from the odd kickabout with the guys from work. And about five years after my amputation, the, no, wrong, about eight years. Wrong maths. Oh, we can fix this in the edit. About 10 years after the amputation. So five years after I stopped being a fitness instructor, um, Physical Disability Rugby League was brought to this country and it was a a colleague's brother played. And then she kept mentioning to me, like, you should go try this. You're like, you're quite sporty. Like, you definitely, like, fit the disability sort of category for this. Like, you should do it, you should do it. I was like, I've always grown up playing football. I'm not interested. I played a tiny bit of rugby in college. Like, it's not for me. No, no, no. And she pestered me and she pestered me and she pestered me. And then one day I just decided to go and it gave me back so much of myself yeah. that I didn't even realise I'd lost. So it was massive for me. And especially um, the bits of sport I'd played. If, In my experience, if you go and play conventional sport as someone with a very clear um, disability, people don't know whether to tackle you to you know, to get stuck in with you or not. And they they don't want to do the wrong thing and be like that guy that sent an amputee to A&E because they're flattened him on the rugby pitch, which 
I have quite a dark sense of humor and stuff. I used to play up to like, no, 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 you can't tackle me, mate. I'll be like, yeah. and then my mates that do me be like, ignore him. But the a, a disability sport where it's you've got to be disabled to be there, you can still have the same taking the mick out of each other. Like when I drop a ball, the lads absolutely rinse before it. Whereas yeah. if I did that at a conventional rugby league training, the people you can't say that to him. He's got one heart. Like, don't don't. Don't say that. Um, <clears throat> and that that element of sport, the the taking the mick out of each other, but you know, it comes from like in a team, it's like a place of love, like you're all you're all like tightly bonded mates, and I miss that so much. And the competition, like the actual like, getting stuck in, like it's it's a big part of who I am. I'm I'm a very competitive bloke. Um and having that back at a, at a proper level where it wasn't just a pat on the head, you know. Go out and let the disabled lad have a run out. Let him let him carry the ball one time. It's a competitive sport, um, yeah. and I, it did. So I had like mental health issues basically between the two, quite bad between like, um, and it. I mean, I was on on the path to like getting the support that I needed, and I was sort of getting support from doctors and things before I started with the rugby. But it really helped take me a bit further as well because for me it made a massive difference to my life. It gave me like, it gave me gold, gave me stuff that I could be proud of. Um, and it was, yeah, it was absolutely massive for me. And it's why I'm, um, one of the reasons I have my account, I try and put stuff out is for anyone that, even if you're not interested in rugby, just come down. Like you'll love it. It'll be, cause it's within my sort of version. There's non-contact and contact roles. So as long as you can move around a rugby pitch, there is like sort of on your feet if if you can't there's the wheelchair game um but there is somewhere for you to play and a, like a place for you in the team with the different positions and the contact and the non-contact and stuff like that so it, it's just like it's a really good opportunity to like to build confidence and to have a good time and you know to be able to set goals and stuff so yeah i'm a i'm a like massive massive proponent of it i think it's great Oh, I love that. And I'm guessing, like, what did you feel like when... Because, like, as a as a proud disabled person myself, I'm not going to lie, if I wasn't, like, born disabled, there'd definitely be parts of me that would be like, oh, God, I'm going to go into this room full of disabled people. What's that going to be like? Like, were you nervous to be in a room um, full of disabled people? Yeah, well, so part of it, like, I didn't class myself. I didn't, I didn't like the word disabled, didn't want the label for quite a while. Um, you know, I was only sort of 20, and I've matured a lot, I'd like to think, at least, since then. But, yeah, so, well, no, I, I could, especially when I was a fitness instructor, I could still do more than the majority of able-bodied people yeah. in society. Like, I was very, very fit, very capable. So I'm not disabled, I'm not, like... You're disabled. I'm not like yeah. I, I, just, I just didn't want it. It took me a long time to. Like, I am like stuff is harder. Like it doesn't mean I can't push my boundaries and do other stuff. Like um, I cycled from Castleford to London the other year to raise money. Like there's there's loads of stuff wow. you can do. Yeah, like I'm not necessarily a massive fan of people saying, "Oh, you can do anything." I, mm. Just I think it, it's I've seen it set up a few people for a fall. But there's so much you can do. Like, don't don't accept a boundary though. On the other, like, it's not that. I think you, you just need to push and push yourself and decide what you want and where you want to go. I think I think you're right about because I I've been doing like lives recently. I've been talking to followers and stuff, and something came up yesterday, which was someone was like, um, "I don't want to say disabled because it's negative." Mm-hmm. And obviously, I'm talking to a group of people who all identify in different ways. Yep. And at first, I was like, oh, God, how do I deal with this? And and I guess it's like, how did you switch between not not seeing it as negative? Because like you said, you could do so much more than non-disabled yep. people. So I can understand non-disabled people listening to this and thinking, well, yeah, but if you can do more than other people, why? Yep. So has there been a journey of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So as well, when I was first disabled, like, I wouldn't let people do anything for me. Like Time my yeah. shoelaces, everything, I was adamant I'd do it myself. Whereas now, I just check in with myself and make sure 
I can do it every now and again, and I'm fine for other people to help me just to make sure I've got the skill set. Um, but yeah, I think one of the things is becoming aware of the social model of disability, um, mm. which like I'm sure you're aware of. But it's basically it's not the limitation your body or condition causes that disables you; it's the world around you that does, and it's limitations. So the fact that buildings don't have ramps as standard. That's what disables someone in a wheelchair, not the fact that they need to use a wheelchair. So just thinking about it like that, it's like, well, actually, I'm I'm still capable of doing most things as long as I've been designed well. And it yeah. shouldn't be, it's not my fault if people haven't designed things well or, or whatever. I'm coming to terms, it took me a while to come to terms with. There are things that are harder. And like I had like back problems for a while because I had muscle wastage down the side that I don't use as much. And it was sort of, it's this is like, it's a real fine line for me. It's like coming to terms with my limitations or like realizing what sort of areas they lay in and then how to push through them in, in like where to put my effort to try and achieve something that I want to do as opposed to just everything's normal, everything's fine. There's nothing wrong, nothing's changed. Like life has changed. Like st some stuff is more difficult. Some stuff hasn't changed. And it's just sort of, accepting of of the world the way it is not maybe the way you'd want it to be or still clinging to how it was before i had my accident it's yeah just, i think it just takes a, like everyone a different amount of time and a different amount of experiences and meeting disabled people probably helped me quite a lot as well because like i said not that like i avoided them particularly before but it's quite easy to go through your life and not meet many yeah. disabled people and certainly not many across a range of different disabilities as well especially because most people tend to, you know, keep them to themselves anyway. Like it's like you, you, you could have actually met loads of disabled people and just not realized because yeah. they've not shared that with you at that time. So yeah. Like, and, and growing up just maturing between, between 20 and, and 36 now, like, yeah, I've, I've, I think I've matured in my outlook and things. So it's, it's a whole, whole raft of life experiences that bring, have brought me to somewhere. And it's, disability isn't i don't think it's negative at all it's a descriptor like yeah. things are more difficult if you have something that is accepted as a disability and I, th I don't think that should be a negative thing to say i think we should be making the world a better place yeah. for people that have something that makes it more difficult like the thing with you know drop curbs on pavement oh. they don't yeah. <laughs> but don't write that they don't just help people in wheelchairs they help you know, people in prams, like it, accessibility helps loads of people in loads of um, different life experiences. So like it, I think that's something that's overlooked a lot is that, oh, we've got to put a ramp in for people with um, with wheelchairs. We only have one wheelchair customer. Like I, I've heard things said like that yeah. before. So, well, you don't like how many people, you know, people that are older that have mobility issues or people that have just hurt their leg and a ramp is easier to use. You know, if you've got a broken leg and you're on crutches, that can happen to anyone. You know, and also anyone can come dis become disabled at any moment. And I think those like those little like nuances of no, it's not just for people in X category. It helps everyone. I think isn't yeah. necessarily like like pushed hard enough and people don't necessarily think about things in the, the whole enough. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, I tutted at drop curves because you can never find any when you need one. Like they're amazing. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's well, in the cities are pretty good, but bloody hell, any town you like rolling for hours finding well, one. When I when I've been people in, in like power chairs or wheelchairs and you see someone parked in front of them and you're just like, What is wrong with you? Like just do better. Like do better. You've, yeah. You, you've saved you've saved yourself whatever a minute or two of looking for a spot or walking a bit further and you've got no idea what impact that could have had on whoever's coming back just don't be so wrapped up in yourself and just do like the right thing half yeah. hundred meters further down like get a grip <laughs> <laughs> please um you mentioned the social model and like design and stuff and i love all mm -hmm. that and i just thought then like I think about design a lot, like random stuff in my house that I'd love to change. So for me, it's like beauty products. So 
like shampoo bottles. There's mm -hmm. certain ones that I are like you know spritzer yep. um, push things. I find that really hard with my hands. So this is just really random. But is there anything in your house that you just like? This would be great if it was designed differently. Oh yeah, no, I um. I mess with stuff too much, so I I fix stuff like that. I can't. Oh dear. Do me. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was really funny. My first ever occupational therapy appointment. I thought she was just like trying to build my confidence up, as you know, like a newly amputated twenty year old lad. I was oh, these ideas are great. These ideas are great. And it, then then I realised that she actually hadn't ever thought of. So like using a like a normal toothbrush. If you go to put the toothpaste on it and it just flops over and it goes into the sink, it's just a little bit grim. So I was like, oh, I'll just put, like put the toothpaste into my mouth straight away and then pick up the toothbrush. That works much easier for you. Like, oh, that's an amazing idea. I was like, I, I get after like, you know, five, 10 years of being an amputee, I should be better than the occupational therapist because I live <laughs> it every minute of every day. But not, I think it was only like a week or two after. Um, and I was like, oh, right. And there's, a, there's a load of things like that. The um, There's cutting boards you can get. that They have these like little nails that come out of them and you're supposed to put your bread on them and they sucker down to the counter. And then that's to help you butter the bread. Oh, but, I could do with that. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend. That's where oh. the story's going. Oh, and no. all they do is they end up just rip, the, they just rip the bread completely apart. And it's just all of the bits of kit that I've ever seen from any catalogs for stuff to do with... Um, like having dexterity issues. It's like they've been designed by an able-bodied person and never tested by anyone at any point ever. So I've, I've got my own little little random tricks and ways of doing things um, that I've, I've like, yeah, developed over time because basically if I can't do something that I think I need to be able to do, I'll, I'll figure out every way I can do it and just hammer and pick one and then hammer it until I'm good at it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, the I'm not a fan of a lot of the uh, the like design solutions to stuff. Like I, I I budge a lot of my own. I love that. Oh my god! Well, that's so much better than like using something that's probably fifty times more expensive. And oh yeah. Let's be honest. I'm not being ageist, but it's probably got an eighty year old like on the promotion because mm -hmm. only older people need. Mobility devices, obviously. Yeah, the, you know, and it is who they market at and stuff like that. But, like, but this doesn't even work well for them. Like, it just oh yeah, it it is. Oh, you can tell I'm a massive fan of stuff like that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think like that just shows like what kind of mindset you've got, and like, yeah, it's really cool because you know that part of sort of the last bit of what I'm going to talk to you about is, you know, if there are any young people watching or listening that maybe are at the start of where you were and not feeling so great or not feeling like they're part of the community like what what advice would you give to that person so the, I think one of the words you used at the end of there is really important like community regardless of what your disability is no matter how niche it is there's always going to be someone out there with some similar experience and yeah. some sort of group and you know depending on how um like unusual a situation you're in it might only be an online one somewhere but there is something for for most people to be able to get some sort of community and have a have a chat and normalize it because i think they're like for me after i stopped when i had like my, my darkest bit it was sort of feeling like isolated and i was the only one going through that yeah. and Amputate upper limb amputation is relatively rare, but there's still plenty of people out there, and you can. St I still talk to people with lower limb amputations because although it's not exactly the same, there's some shared experience there, and <clears throat> and it's as well like don't lose what makes you tick would be my like because I did I lost I like not consciously and I didn't I didn't be like I'm not playing sport because I've lost my arm I just sort of slowly like drifted away from it. So whatever your passion is, whether it's, you know, art, art um, sports, like doing stuff in media, whatever whatever it is that makes your like, heart sing, there'll be a way to do it and a, bit, a way to be involved in it. And like, don't don't take other people's nose for, an, 
for as as like a final answer on things. Like people have got no idea what you're capable of. You, you've got to decide if you want it enough, then go for it. Have a have a crack, and you might not end up in the exact job or the exact position you want to be, but you'll probably end up somewhere good at the end of it. Where like you don't necessarily end, need to end up where you planned to get somewhere productive. Like. I never thought I'd represent my country, let alone in rugby, like and, and in any way, shape, or form. And all I did was go down to training, have a laugh, fell in love with it in seconds. And then when they started talking about a national team, we didn't expect it to happen. We didn't expect the World Cup to get off the ground. So so many moving parts. Like, you never know where stuff's going to go. Just, like, don't don't just close yourself off to opportunities and things. Because I, I did that a bit as well. There are there are so many opportunities, even if it's easy when you're disabled to close yourself off from them as well. Where I've got to now, and it's taken me a long time, but I'm a, a big fan of the, like, how can I not know I can't? So any kind of task, anything I want to be involved in, it's how do I make that happen? Not, oh, no, I can't do that because of X, which is is so easy to fall into, especially if you're not in a good good place mentally and stuff. But... There is there is normally a way that you can you can get at least close to what you want to do. So yeah, it's, it's approach stuff is how how do I do that? How do I make it happen? Not yeah. oh, I can't. They need to get into the mindset of you brushing your teeth, basically. <laughs> that's <laughs> honestly that is the way to do it, isn't it? Like, how can I do it in a way that suits me? Yeah. Cause that that's as well. Like for people with other dexterity issues, it'd be a different thing. So it's just Right, sit there like with loads of tasks, like doing doing zips up on jackets, nightmare for me. So mm. I just put them down on the bed where I can use my stump, do it, and then pull it over my head. And it's yeah. just it's just with that little thing. But yeah, there's there's always I, what I've always found there's our way to achieve, and it might be that I need help from someone else, and that's the best way of doing it. Yeah. Like it doesn't doesn't necessarily need to be done in isolation, but it's yeah, it's it's the how can this how can I achieve this? How can I do this from a, a tiny task to representing your country? Like it's always positive mindset. It, like it's e- very easily said, but it does make the world a difference. Yeah, it does. I th- just how well, you said that then. I'm similar with like coats and stuff. I zip it up first and then I mm-hmm. put it over. Yeah. Have you have you found that like you have to be a really prepared person? Like I've found that I think right, I need to do this because. You know, I need to make sure I've got enough time. Yeah, so my life definitely runs smoother when I do. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if my wife would less necessarily agree that I am. Right. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm a really good problem solver with that yeah. stuff in general. So even if it's even if I haven't necessarily set myself up for the win with the, with enough time and stuff, I can normally kind of like botch some sort of, of solution to, to a problem. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is. That's one of the things. Being prepped, like when I'm cooking, being prepping stuff beforehand and taking my time, stuff just goes smoother. Instead yeah. of instead of like, oh, that's burning now because it takes me longer to chop a carrot than it should. And blah, blah, blah. whereas a bit of prepping, a bit of thought, if you've got a physical disability, makes stuff easier, doesn't it? Like you, oh, you know, yeah. everything going down the pan. <laughs> Literally. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, my final question, really, is. What I ask everybody is, what is the dream, Nick? Where do you see yourself? Have you got a goal or a, a dream or are you just living life? Um, very happy with my wife. Very happy with my, my job and my career. So, yeah. like, being a two-time World Cup winner would be would be pretty nice. So yeah. that, that, that should be in, um, hopefully, Australia and New Zealand in a couple of years. Yeah. Um, I'll be I'll be getting on a little bit then in terms of age for for playing rugby. So we'll we'll see if my body can take it. But I'd uh, I'd love to be there and be part of that. So yeah, that that's probably a a Amazing. big uh, a big thing for me. Right. Well, we'll keep a lookout. Where can people find you on Instagram? Who needs two arms? Um, with hyphens in between the each word. If you if you pop that in, I should come up straight away. I'm the uh, the ginger one arm bloke, so it shouldn't be hard to tell who I am. <laughs> amazing thank you so much honestly it's been so well it's been great to get to know you finally yeah yeah it's been a pleasure really enjoyed it and what the listeners don't know is we've had a lot of tech trouble so thank you for <laughs> bearing with me today 
But we got there in the end. We did. And life would be boring if it was easy. So, yeah, keeps it interesting. Exactly. And I feel like it's kind of a metaphor of what we've literally been talking about. Like, there's barriers in life, but we just keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Thank you so much, Nick. And we will, no doubt, catch up on Instagram soon. Yeah, lovely. It's been a pleasure.